G'day fellas and welcome to another Beyond All Reason video. In this video, we're going to show you the basics of frontlining. Now, it's important to remember, I'm not the best player, so if you're true skill rating 46 like Snooper, there's a good chance you probably know all this stuff already and probably have plenty more to add. This is targeted towards the newer players, people who are just learning to frontline for the first time. We're going to cover a whole bunch of different topics. If you'd like to jump ahead to something in particular, I'll make sure I leave chapters down below. But just to give you an idea of some of the things that we're going to be going through, we're going to be going through the starting sequence, we're going to be going through scouting, we're going to be going through defense, through reclaim, and we're going to be going through advanced base building. This is going to be about a 30 minute video, so grab a drink, sit back, relax, and let's get to it. So the first thing we're going to talk about is your starting sequence. On the front line, on most maps, you're going to want to try and take as many metal extractors as you can without walking. That's going to be a key factor here. We want to try and stay still. So as you can see, our commander plonks himself down in between all three of these metal extractors. Now, we're going to be utilizing a build order that Stardom uh, does, where basically he starts off by going for two mechs, then goes into some wind, then we'll add the third mechs, and then we'll go for a solar collector after he makes his bot lab. That's really key. Because remember, once that bot lab comes up, you're going to be wanting to train as many units as you possibly can, and that's going to be a pretty big drain on your energy. Energy is a lot more, uh, a lot more uh, dynamic than the metal is. Uh, so by doing this, we're kind of front loading a lot of our energy expenditure, uh, and subsequently we we make sure that when we want to spend that energy, we're only spending metal. Because keep in mind, uh, we are just going to be spending metal on our solar collector. So. That's your starting sequence. Now let's talk a little bit about your opening units. So something that I like, love to start off with, and let's turn down our music a little bit, are just a couple of ticks. Now on this map in particular, I like to get a Lazarus out because the Lazarus is gonna go around and start collecting all of these little rocks. If we zoom out really far, well, not not super far. Let me, let me do that. And now we zoom out. I don't know why we can't see it. We can't see it, but uh, all, all of these little rocks out here uh, essentially are, are metal. So we want to try and grab those first. And now some ticks. And these guys are used as a combination of scouting and also of as offense. So basically, we want to just check and see exactly if we've got any enemies coming in towards us so that we can prepare a defense. So that's really key. So after I do that, I always like to go into a couple of construction bots. It's really important to have build power in your base. And while you've got your commander here in your base, who's going to be helping out with lots of building, you want to get him up to the front as quickly as you can. Now with our ticks... We've been fortunate in that we are scouting out enemy positions, or at least we're, we're scouting out some of the units that are coming through here, our ally helping out there as well. Um, so there's a couple of different ways that you can manage early game leaks. So leaks are basically, a, a, as a frontliner, it's your job to protect the backline. These guys back here, they're focusing on their economies. They're not too fussed about, you know, making units, that sort of thing. That's our job on the frontline. So we need to manage the leaks that come through. Those are those pesky units that run past us and go and try and kill the metal extractors like these ones right here. And you can see I've got a whole bunch of ticks that I've just made because the ticks are going to be the only thing that can really keep up with these fast little units. Now, fortunately, my commander has just picked up all of these uh, kills, so I, I don't have to stress too much. Hey guys, this is the first time I'm actually editing a video just to put a little bit of information in that I think is really important that I didn't actually mention here. Even though I've got opened with a really greedy build, I go into five construction bots. I'm always really flexible with that. If I see that the enemy's pushing me, I immediately make units. And that's why you can see I've made a whole bunch of ticks here, which are just designed to defend. In the event that my enemy was looking to push me with even more units, I would make sure that I didn't get five construction bots out. So I would advise just as a general rule, avoid going for five construction bots if the enemy is looking to attack you, okay? So try and maybe get a couple of grunts out there, get a couple of pawns out there, and then begin moving into your higher number of construction bots. But I'm going to pause it just because I know I said it was going to be a 30-minute video. The game goes for 30 minutes. It might be a little bit longer than that, but let's we'll slow it down a little bit because there's a number of different things that we've got to talk about before we do what we're about to do. So we are going to be leaving the base. This is pretty important, right? Our commander, our goal is to get up onto the front here. We want to try and hit this position. Now, granted, on, on this map, there, there are about four lanes. You can uh, think of them kind of like this, basically. So you've got one, two, three, and four. So we want to get up here and we want to defend this lane as quickly as we can. But at the same time, we want to make sure that we spend our resources before we do that. So some of the rules that people use is don't leave your base until you've spent all your metal. For me, I'm a little bit more flexible with it. I think, well, metal, it's something, as long as you've got the build power, you should be okay. But anyway, we move on, we move forward. So before we leave the base, we want to spend at least enough of our metal 
or at least uh, make it create enough energy that we can afford to leave the base. So you can see right here, we've thrown down a whole bunch of wind and we're going to be throwing down energy storage. This is really key because this th there are fluctuations in your wind and sometimes you will have really great wind and sometimes you won't. And for those times that you don't, you want to make sure that you're prepared. And that's what this is going to do. So I always like to make an energy storage before I leave the base. And as you can see, we've got our first construction bot who is, is taking all of these mexes along the edge of the map and coming up towards the front. And the commander, commander's just making his way directly to the wall, towards the front because we will have a construction bot behind this who's going to be going on the other side. So you've kind of got these almost three alleyways, one, two, three, or three, three pathways. And we want to try and get to this metal extractor position because as you can see, it's worth almost double what the other ones are worth. So if we can get that down, it's going to be absolutely kicking. Uh, so that that's getting to the front. So let's talk a little bit about securing the front because now we've now we've gotten to the point where the commander is starting to get up there and we're going to need to secure the front. So what are our options here for securing the front? So the first thing is units. Of course, we've got our grunts uh, and our, our pawns, the, the basic unit here uh, in, in the early game that are really good. They're, they're quite quick. Uh, they're nimble. They're mobile. Uh, and they're always able to respond to... Uh, enemy incursion so it's important that we, we get out at least a couple of these early on because if we go straight for the good stuff we're going to be left out of position you can see we're making sure that we we call out this position here i've said look out you know there, there's a there's a whole bunch of ticks running in over here uh or are they fleas i can never remember which which name they are they're, they're ticks in in uh, in beyond all reason back in ta they were they were fleas so now we've made it up towards the front we have we, we've uh, achieved our goal which is we've gotten to the front it's about the four minute mark and we've started taking that metal extractor behind this we've got our other metal extractors that are being picked up you can see we've got everything secured and now what we need to do is we need to start denying space from our enemy so their goal is the same thing but at the same time we don't want to just take you know we don't want to just allow a stalemate we want to start denying them resources so i bring my commander up to the front and degun that turret because now that that turret's no longer there i can start putting down my own turret and you can see what there's a couple little intricacies of this let me pause the game right now let's uh does it pause the music it does pause the music wonderful of course i want a mic drop right now so as you can see We've degarded the turret. The turret was exposed. The commander's been okay. We've still got plenty of health on our commander, 83%. And now we're putting the turret behind the commander. This is going to block the turret from receiving any deguns. And just as Dark attempted to put a turret down in front of his commander, our commander was able to take it out uh, just, just by using his regular attack. So Dark is going to have to fall back away from this position because now we've got the pawns to put on pressure here as well. So what are we doing by, by being up here? Well, we're not securing this, but we are denying it from our enemy. And that's really key because this small advantage is something that can begin to build over time. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking to secure the front and try and find any advantage that we can now behind this we're dealing with leaks constant leaks coming through now they've come through from another lane but that's okay remember it's our job to make sure that we we get these leaks and you'll see a, a, a quick little reclaim attempt here we try and suck all the life out of them uh using the construction turrets one of them manages to get away but fortunately our allies got some gunships out already uh, but one of the, the, the key components, which is, is very important uh, as you are on the front line and as you move up. So think about it from this perspective, right? You're moving forward and you're taking all of these metal extractors. So your metal income is slowly over time going to be increasing. you got to make sure that your energy increases with it as well. And that's why we can see that back home, we've started to scale with our wind turbines. Now, normally you'll see two construction bots building these, but I figure I only need one because I've got the construction turrets down. And these are two really important things that we'll talk about later. Scaling your build power and scaling your energy. You need to make sure that you've always got appropriate build power and that you're always expanding your energy. These are, are, are very, very key things that will uh, will, will keep you down if, if you do not do them. So this is something to note. Now, you'll see on my, uh, on my bot lab, we've got a whole bunch of, of construction bots that are just... I, I call it supervising because uh, if i'm from age of empires 4 we have a supervised mechanic but they're they're guarding they are helping out with the construction of all of these rocketeers now one of the things that we haven't really talked much about yet is unit composition uh i, I guess i should provide another caveat here that this is mainly for the arm and mainly for bots so it's not for vehicles it's not for core but there's still a lot of basics here that can really uh, apply to both of those things if you if you enjoy playing core and enjoy playing vehicles with core it, it still works uh, from for the most part here but there are some specific things that we are going to be talking about so number one our rocketeer so 
you'll see that I've uh, we've got a little bit of a stalemate that's broken out here. We've got dragon's teeth in the front. We've got LLTs on the back. And you can't get through, right? Well, not necessarily. There's ways that you can break this. And the first way that you can do that is through the Rocketeer. The Rocketeer is good versus static defense. It's got a longer range and it's able to deal with these quite effectively. So that's what we're going to look to do. But one of the ways that we're going to do that is through flanking. We've already got all of our dragon's teeth down here. So we don't really want to... We don't... We're locking this area down. We don't want him to be able to push through here. So we're making sure that we're just securing that. But we can always come through over on this little avenue, which is what we're going to be looking to do. Now, light laser turrets or sentries, uh, or on the other side, guards, they're very effective against pawns, very effective against ticks, but they're not particularly effective against anything else. I mean, that, those really light units like your, your rovers uh, that, that you see coming around, like they're, they're quite decent against that. But now you can see we, we've started uh, to push down with the Rocco. So some players like to go for as little as, as three Rocketeers, and then change it up into um, into uh, maces. Uh, but it, it, it's not for me. I, I've been really enjoying Rocketeer spam. So that's what I'm going to be demonstrating uh, in, in this game. So we're, we're now looking to break uh, the static defenses. And we're going to begin coming in towards the enemy. You can see that we're, we're, we're quite aggressive here. And I make a little bit of a mistake. I wasn't paying attention. Um, and, and we do get a little bit too close for comfort. But we've managed to break through the front. And once the front is gone like this, well, now all of a sudden, the pawns don't have any threat, do they? Because remember, the, the sentries and the guards are very good against pawns, but not particularly good against anything else. As you can see, they, they, have, they lack that range. So now that they're all dead, well, guess what? We can now run through with our pawns. We can get up the front there. We can start to threaten that commander as well. Now, as we're moving forward, we're making sure that we throw down these sentries just on our flanks here. Obviously, we got flanked multiple times already by Blue, but you can see big D-guns coming out from Dark, so I made a pretty big mistake there, uh, rallying in my Roccos a, a little bit too far, unfortunately. So you've always got to be very careful against them. Now, you might be wondering, okay, well, what's the best way to defend against something like this? Well, it's actually, you can go for even bigger lasers. Uh, but uh, let's talk about the next part that we've got. So... You'll see a whole bunch of little friends I've got out here right now. My rejuvenators, as I like to call them. The Lazarus. Uh, I, I'm, I'm forgetting about them, but uh, we, we, managed, we managed to get them uh, back in. But now, these guys are really important to your front. Not only do they repair, which is for free, but they also reclaim. So any units that have died, they can reclaim them. Or they can rejuvenate them. They can bring them back to life. They can resurrect them. I like, I just call them rejuvenators because, you know, I, I like to rejuvenate the skin. Uh, but uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, we now have uh, that, that sort of, I, I'm, I'm just going to pause it here just because we're, we're kind of getting to the second stage of your front line. And this is where the advanced defenses come up. So the commander can't make uh, the, the uh, I think it's, is it called the sentry? I'm not 100% sure what it's called. It, it used to be called the, the sentinel back in. Uh, so we've got the overwatch here and the warden. Uh, so th these are advanced defenses that come up um, from your construction bot or construction vehicle. And these guys have got a really long range and they do a lot of damage, especially against those T1 units. So they're very effective at, at doing that. And you can see the range on these. I appreciate there's probably a, a lot of red circles that are coming out right now, but these guys have a huge range. And if they come up, it's a massive threat to, to your position here. And you can see this guy's got his, uh, his, his gat gun is, is pretty well, you know, it, it's going to be complete soon. He's got the commander on it and that's a massive threat to me. So I've got a couple of options about what I can do. I can look to go for my own, but I'm quite far behind him. He's already, he is already 50% uh, complete. So we do a quick little repair. Commander up to 100% health with all of our Lazarus. And we're going in. This is where the idea of Combomb uh, becomes relevant. But we're not going to need that here. We're just going to come up. We're just going to degun it before it comes through. But we make a little bit of a, of a mistake. We misjudge. I didn't know how much damage this flamethrower turret does. And I, I lose my commander. So a little bit of a mistake. Not the perfect game that you'd like to see. Of course. But still a lesson to be learned there. Do not underestimate the static defense of the enemy. And make sure you utilize that degun where possible. Degun obviously capable of killing any unit in a single shot. Except for the enemy commander. Uh, you can't kill commanders. Uh, but I said, you know what? I've, I've got a storage back home. I've got a metal storage. So I'm just going to suck my commander up. And we'll just pretend like it was part of the plan. It wasn't part of the plan. But we'll pretend like it was. So we're just making sure that we just reclaim everything and repair everything. This, this is really, really key uh, for us. Because we're going to continue to look to push down. Uh, and wh what's important to note is that we have now denied that from our enemy. They were, they were just about to get that up. I think it had, had almost or it had probably just finished as we came through, uh, but we managed to deny it. And that, that's what's key because now that allows us to continue our push here uh, and, uh, and, and continue coming forward. Now, I'll, I'll quickly touch on a subject. I wasn't planning to because it's a bit more of an advanced one, 
But you can see that the, the enemy's having a bit of trouble dealing with the Rocketeers. There's a couple of ways that you can deal with them. The first way uh, is to get a whole bunch of pawns or grunts and just run right up to them. They're very quick and you can just run right on top of them and start attacking them. The second way is you can go for this thing right here. Sneaky Pete, which is a cloakable jammer tower. Uh, and so this jams your enemy's radars. They can't see anything within this. You can see this little circle right now around here. Anything that's in here, they will not be able to see. So what my enemy could potentially do is look to put a sneaky peek down here, and that would prevent me from seeing these little dots on the map. Now, granted, I'd be able to still walk up to them, and if I've got line of sight, I can I can attack them, but I wouldn't be able to do that. Or, or rather, I, I would I would have a much easier time if it weren't for the sneaky peek. So that that's really, really important. So as we continue moving up, we're, we're still attempting to deny more metal. So now we're denying a total of five metal from our enemy, and we're going to start taking this for ourselves. Remember that we've got that five metal. So that's five metal every second that's coming in for us that's not coming in for our enemy. So a pretty big advantage there uh, already. And this is going to slowly and steadily mean that our unit numbers continue to increase as we as we push down upon our enemy um, so th this is this is really important. Now, at the same time, we're making sure that we reclaim. We, we can see our Lazarus here just repairing up. This 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 uh, dragon's I, I don't remember what it's. I think it's dragon's claw, uh, or dragon's maw rather. Uh, did a lot of damage, man. These these things are crazy good. I got to start building those. I tell you what, those those flamethrowers are impressive. Uh, so now behind this, we'll pause it because we're getting to the 12 minute mark. So this is kind of like where you where, where you you start reaching uh, quite a late stage of tier one. And there's a couple of things that we need to talk about here. So the first one is going to be um, scaling. So we, we, we touched on it before, but there's a couple key factors that you need to look at scaling. The first one is going to be build power. The second one is going to be energy. So at the moment, you can see I've got a total of... How many wind gens do I have? I've got 69 wind turbines, which is a wonderful number to have. I would never recommend going for more or less than 69 uh, because that is an absolutely nice number. Uh, you could probably go for 420. Uh, no, but in, in all seriousness, you want to keep making power or wind, wind turbines like this uh, because it's going to ensure that you've got a, a solid energy economy. Now, one of the mistakes I've also made this game is I haven't gone for advanced solar collectors. Advanced solar collectors are a great way of transitioning from a wind economy into a an eventual fusion economy because that's what we're going to want to do very soon so a couple of, of things that i would have done better this game or i should have done better this game number one is i probably should have had about five or six advanced solar collectors and i don't and number two is my build power is not the strongest back here i've only got four nanos that are down or four construction turrets that are down which isn't a lot but it's, it's not a problem. Well, I, I say it's not a problem. I mean, fortunately, against the player I, I'm playing against, you know, it's it's not a problem in these circumstances. But had I been against, you know, a, a, a true skill 40 player, uh, it definitely would have been a, a problem because they, they would have had a significant advantage at this point uh, compared to me. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to be getting a tier two construction unit from our allies. Uh, now, often what you will do is you'll pay for this. Now, in this game, I was very fortunate in that my, uh, my ally behind me, uh, Punjiba, uh, gave it to me for free, which was very, very nice of them. And so I've got a construction aircraft. And the, the job of this construction aircraft, single-handedly, is to upgrade my, my metal extractors into advanced metal extractors. And they're going to upgrade every single one. Now, I've lost one back up here. This one's been down for a while. Uh, but essentially, what we're going to do is, you can see, these are, this is a standard metal extractor, right? 1.8 metal coming through on this bad boy. When you upgrade that to an advanced metal extractor, that goes from 1.8 to 7.3. So that's a that's an increase of 5.5. That's a huge amount of of extra metal that you're now getting. So what this guy is going to do is he is going to come through and he is going to upgrade every single metal extractor all the way to the front. And what we're going to do is make sure that we train a, a, a couple of construction bots and we're going to follow him all the way up the front. So he's not building it by himself. So what we're going to do is just get our construction bots and then just right click. You can see that little symbol there. That means guard. Uh, so the, the construction bots will guard. Uh, and we will make sure that, that he's got friends all along the way to help him build. Because we don't want to be building, you know, construction turrets everywhere. Uh, I mean, you, you probably could. But I, I wouldn't recommend it. So we continue pushing on our front. Not only are we managing to secure more metal extractors, but we're also starting to secure reclaim fields, which is very important because the, the further you push up, you're going to be able to, to reclaim uh, th those, those fields. So here you can see we've got plenty of reclaim in here. So we're going to look to try and take that. And that's going to, to pump us uh, back up. Uh, but, but now that we've gotten our tier 2 construction out, what that's going to mean is our metal is slowly going to be increasing. And you can see at the moment we're sitting on an income of about 78, 79. Depends on if, if, we're, um, if, if we're going to uh, 
um, or if we're reclaiming. But now that, that's enough to justify throwing down a tier two lab. So we've managed to hold at the moment with a whole bunch of tier one stuff. We pushed through. We've been pretty successful here. There hasn't been too much of a threat from the enemy that, that's coming in. And, and granted, you know, I, I was fortunate in this game that I, I played against someone who was a, a lower skill level than me. So it's very easy to talk about what's happening. And obviously this is a, a, a you know, the, 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 the best circumstances is, is what is happening here. Um, but now that we're going into tier two, there's a couple of other things that we want to do. So remember that construction aircraft that, that was down here. This guy is going to come through and... I was wondering why that never built. That's why right there. But my ally took this uh, took this metal extractor. Um, so, th this aircraft is going to be all the way down here just building everything. And he's going to be followed around by our, our, our harem of construction bots. And back in the base, we need to make sure that we are scaling with fusion. Now, granted, at this point, we still don't have our advanced solar up, so it's it's not not the not the, the cleanest game for me. And our wind has hit 2.3. And th this is part of the reason why you want to go to advanced solar. We've had pretty good wind all game. We're at 13 minutes. I don't think it's dropped below 6 this game, but it's finally done it. And when that happens, everything goes to shit for me because I did not make that advanced solar. So don't be like Drongo. Make your advanced solar. Uh, solar. Uh, I don't have a timeline for you, but generally you, can, uh, you, you would want to add your advanced solar before you go T2. I would definitely make that recommendation. And you probably want to add your advanced solo when you've got about three or four nanos. Uh, and you, you just got to remember that you, or you always want to go into it slowly, right? Like you don't don't overcommit. Don't, don't throw down six like this all at the same time. You start with one, then get your second, then get your third, that sort of thing. So now that our tier two timing has come in, let's talk a little bit about unit compositions. What, what is a good unit to be going for uh, once you get tier two? Now, remember, this is for arm. And this is also for uh, for bots. So for, for um, vehicles, I'm not talking to you. For core bots, for core vehicles, not talking to you guys either. You're going to have to work that one out for yourselves. So I can give you a couple of tips. Uh, for, for core bots, you probably want to go Sheldon's. Uh, for core uh, vehicles, I mean, I'd, I'd probably just go for the... Is it the bull? Uh, and for uh, for arm vehicles, I'd, I'd probably start off with some Jaguars. Uh, but... If we were to talk about uh, what we what we we should be going for at this moment, uh, I would be going into and I I do go into hounds. Now the reason I'm not going into hounds right now is because my energy has gone terrible, and you can see still more than a minute later we're sitting down on 4.4 wind speed. So you know when when it rains it pours, uh, except it's not raining, it's just not windy. Um, so we're slowly adding in our advanced solar collectors here. This is really key. Uh, and, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm upset. I've got my head in my hands. It, it's a very sad state of affairs. Uh, at the same time, we lost our Lazarus towards the front, so we always want to make sure that we're thinking about reclaim. When you see a big reclaim field, uh, and which, by the way, uh, for anybody wondering, there's a, a great widget that you can get here, uh, which shows you reclaim fields. Uh, so for, for me, I use grid hotkeys, um, and that means that when I press F11, it's going to reveal my widgets. So I use, it's called reclaim field highlighter. Uh, so if you don't if you don't know how to use um, widgets, uh, jump onto the, the the Beyond All Reason Discord, uh, and that will uh, that will tell you everything that you need to do or everything you need to know. There's a there's a whole like channel that that's dedicated to how to install them. It's really easy. Uh, you just turn it on, and then that that tells you you know what if you're selecting a unit that can reclaim, it will then show it for you. Uh, and you can see this. So th this is really, really important because now we're going to be able to take all of our metal and and uh, essentially start reclaiming it. Um, and and that's just going to pump up our, our metal even further. Uh, at the same time, we're also just re rejuvenating these bad boys or resurrecting them. Um, and now we're moving into Hounds. So Hounds are such a great unit in, in the early stages of T2. They do very well against T1 units. They do okay against T2 units, but the main focus or the, the, the main highlight, the reason why I love them is they're quick. If your enemy is in trouble, you can cover. If there is a raid that's coming through, if there's a leak that's coming through, you can cover that leak. The hounds allow you to have that versatility. If, if you need to be somewhere else on the map, you can be there. Uh, and that's what, what I love about them. On top of that, they've got uh, different firing modes. So for the hounds, two firing modes. The first one is your uh, heavy plasma. The second one is your gals or your gauze, depending on where you're from in the world. Heavy plasma has got an AOE to it, but it's a much slower shot. Uh, and your gals, it, it is a much faster shot, but it has no AOE. So you want to utilize the, the gals if you're up against fast units. So we've now begun, uh, or we, we're pretty much at, at this point uh, got all of our advanced metal extractors up. We're, we're sitting at a hundred uh, metal. 
a minute at the moment or 98. This one on the front line, this is, this is my uh, pride and joy, 13 metal per second coming in. Uh, so this is a really nice amount of, of passive metal that's coming in. And I mean, just to compare to my allies at the moment, you know, we've got 54, 36, 56, 91 back here, 35, 49, 59. So I think this guy might be booming like a madman. Yeah, you can see this guy's going, going for like aphises and stuff. So that's why his metal uh, income is, is pretty darn good. Um, but uh, ours is all off the natural stuff, the stuff that you get out of the ground. So now that we've... Now that we've thrown down our advanced solars and we've started making units, that means that we can begin the second phase. Or I guess technically this is the third phase. Because if you're going to look at the phases, you'd say wind and you transition your wind into advanced solar and then you transition your advanced solar into fusion. And now that it is that stage. And you can see we've got the start and build coming out. Now, one of the mistakes I've made here is I haven't built anti-nuke yet. Uh, I probably wanted to get that up a lot sooner. Uh, in this game, I definitely could have had my timings much more quick. But I guess realistically, we're just talking about the basic principles here. So uh, we're, we're, what we're doing is making sure that we always look to, to throw down an arbalist here. These guys are incredible. If your enemy tries to sneak something by you, this guy is going to take them down. They're pretty cheap, only 820 metal. Uh, it, is, it is a very, very uh, effective anti-air unit. Uh, I, I always like to throw down another one here on, on this edge as well. So with that, we're going to continue scaling our fusion. And one of the interesting things to note here is that we're not building energy converters with them. We've got a couple on the front line, but that's okay. We're, we're not building the advanced energy converters because what we're doing is we're taking all of the metal that we've got from our metal extractors and we're putting that into units. And this is something that I, I, I probably didn't really comprehend for at, at least... The, the first couple of weeks that I played. You know, when I was watching that stardom game, I'm like, well, where are his energy converters? Why isn't he going these energy converters? It's like, well, he doesn't need them. The, the fusions are because he's making units. You know, the, the whole goal of this game is to make units and kill your enemy. And for me, you know, I always saw that energy was a means to get metal. Whereas for stardom on, in, in that game, it was like, well, metal... Oh, did I never upgrade you? Oh, that, that's sad. Uh, never upgraded this guy over here. This guy was... Oh, man. I, I, I could be on so much more metal than what I am, right? Like, I could be sitting on 30 plus... 130 plus metal. Uh, which is which is absolutely amazing. Uh, but, yeah. Essentially, you know... He's utilizing... Uh, his metal and energy to make units rather than to make economy. And, and that's part of the reason why you don't see that. So, we've got a bit of a push coming down now. Uh, you can see that we've still got the, a, a large Rocketeer force here. And we're, we're somewhat throwing it away. Because Rocketeers, they lose a lot of value once the T2 comes out. Uh, especially once the T2 comes out. And you can see the sharpshooters are down here now. Uh, and we're going to push on them. No micro coming out from our enemy at this point. Um, but let's talk a little bit about adva advanced base building. So, one of the things I learned from Stardom's games uh, was when you're playing frontline like this, you are going to be prone to attacks, to raids, all that sort of thing. Uh, and you are the front line of defense. So if one of your fusions goes down, you don't want them to chain react onto the rest of them. So you want to space them out. And that's exactly what we do here. It means that we've got a little bit more uh, room in our base and we're taking up a little bit more space. Compare that to a, a, you know, a beautiful looking base like, like we see back here. It, it is significantly different. I, I will say though that you, we're probably lacking a little bit of space for our en energy converters. But you know what? I'll allow it. I'll permit it for, for the moment. So anyway, we've just been pumping out hounds for the moment, but we will again begin to transition. You know, we, we talked a little bit earlier about that unit composition idea. Uh, so the, the next stage is going to be into what used to be known as Zeus's, but I think they're now known as... Whoop, goodbye, Commander. Uh, what they're, they're now known as Welders. Uh, so these guys are really strong on the front line. Um, but, and and I, ideally what you want to do is you want to have trash coming up with them uh, to help accompany them. And you can see with the hounds, we've been able to push up and we're going to, of course, start claiming a reclaim field. So this has got 6,000 metal in it. And one of the big questions that you might have is like, okay, I've got all of this metal. What the hell am I going to do with this metal, right? Like, uh, I, I'm, I'm already sitting back here. I've got, uh, to be fair, I don't have enough construction nanos out here, but, you know, I, I'm sitting back here. I'm spamming out T2. I'm spamming out T1. And I'm sitting on 9,000 metal and it's still going up because I've got all of this reclaim. What am I going to do? Well, there's a good answer to that, my friend. And that answer is T3. So this is where it be becomes like the, the next goal of the game. So we, we're going through all of these tiers uh, and we are going to put down T3. T3 is a great way if you've got a whole bunch of metal stacked up and, you know, you've got a pretty decent uh, metal economy that you can just, in, in the blink of an eye, say goodbye to your metal. Uh, it will very quickly uh, start to start to vanish. I, I say that, but it's it's like it's taken some time. It's because all of these nanos over here are, are building uh, rather than building building this. But there, there we go. So now you can see we're, we're sitting at about 382. And it looks like the enemy has called GG. It's still going to take a little bit of time here. Um, 
to, to get rid of them. But I mean, realistically, I think we've covered, you know, pretty much most of the basics of the front line. There's still a huge amount of things that we haven't talked about. We haven't talked about Junos. Uh, we haven't talked about uh, basic static of defense, you know, at the tier uh, at the tier 1.5 level. So we haven't really talked that much about Gauntlets, which is your longer range plasma artillery. Uh, we haven't talked about T2 uh, static defense yet either. Uh, but I think this is a, a, a pretty decent um, basic guide that will help you as a frontliner really try and understand uh, what is your job and how can you do that job. So I hope that that's been of assistance to you. If you've got any questions, please let me know. If you, if you think that I've let anything out, please let me know. If you've got any feedback, of course, feel free to leave it. I am learning when it comes to bar. I'm still not, not quite as, as good as I'd like to be. Uh, but uh, we will make sure that, uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure I keep practicing and, and, and keep improving. But uh, anyway, thank you so much for watching. And uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one.